Hello everyone! In this video, I am going to tell you about 7 chemical elements, properties of which usually elicit surprise and seem extremely strange. I'd like to give the last 7th place to a metal called zirconium. In the periodic table it is located in the group 4 between titanium and hafnium. This metal is easily malleable, besides it is extremely corrosion resistant and in terms of corrosion resistance is comparable to glass. Under regular conditions, this metal can only be dissolved in hydrofluoric acid and it almost doesn't react with other acids. That is the reason why it is used in nuclear reactor production, because it can withstand extreme conditions inside reactors and it also lets neutrons freely pass through it. However, in spite of its exceptional durability, in an emergency at nuclear power plant, this metal can exhibit quite dangerous and weird properties. To demonstrate them, I'll do an experiment with zirconium powder. When candled regularly, zirconium powder burns very brightly, producing an incredibly intense heat of up to 3000 degrees Celsius. Such intense heat even shatters porcelain. For my second experiment, I added some water to the zirconium powder, which makes it burn even brighter, almost blinding camera matrix with its bright flame. Instead of hindering the combustion reaction, water actually helped amplify it. At such a high temperature, this metal started crowding out hydrogen from water. Now imagine such a reaction taking place in nuclear reactor. There actually was such an instance in 2011 at Fukushima nuclear plant, when due to overheating of the nuclear fuel, Zirconium rods in the reactor melted and started reacting with water, producing a lot of explosive hydrogen, which streamed into the building through the valve. It mixed with oxygen and blew up the building. It is because of this treacherous property of zirconium to react with water that it comes to 7th place. I gave 6th place to such a radioactive metal as thorium. On its own, thorium is a low-level radioactivity element, and it mostly radiates alpha rays, which can be seen very well in a Wilson cloud chamber. Still, in spite of its radioactivity, this metal is more abundant in Earth's crust than uranium. That is so thanks to its incredibly long half-life over 14 billion years. There is so much of it in Earth's crust that it can be found anywhere on Earth, from rock masses in Sweden to monoxide sand beaches in Brazil. Inside our planet there is even more thorium. Its radiative decay in Earth's molten inner magnetic rocks is responsible for generating most of Earth's inner heat. But thorium's weirdness has to do with something else. If handled the right way, it can become an ideal nuclear fuel for safe nuclear reactors working on molten salt. Because it is easier to extract than uranium, and its radioactive waste is easier to store than that of uranium. However, during the Cold War, all researchers were focused on the chemical properties and uses of uranium, because it was considered a more promising raw material for making nuclear bombs and production of plutonium from it. That is why, nowadays, instead of using cheap thorium energy, we are engineering wind turbines and solar panels. That is why 6th place goes to thorium. I decided to give the 5th place to one more unusual metal, which is europium. This element is found among elements with quite extraordinary physical properties, among lanthanides. In contrast to its fellow lanthanides, europium got a few peculiarities, one of which is abnormal chemical activity. When water is added to it, europium dissolves in it like such an alkali metal as lithium. However, if we try to ignite it, it will refuse to burn, even if candled with a powerful gas burner. But that's not all. After spending a couple of days exposed to the air, this metal turns into an oxide, which glows red in the ultraviolet light. 
these elements compounds are added to well-known Chinese strontium aluminate luminophores, which are frequently used to adorn walls or used as decorations elsewhere. So, fifth place goes to europium. I decided to give the fourth place to one of the noble gases, to krypton. Like all noble gases, krypton is odorless and colorless. I'm storing it in a such a low pressure ampule. If we apply electric current to such an ampule, the gas inside will start glowing, looking just like a lightning bolt inside a test tube. Speaking of lightning bolts, the thing is, krypton has several radioactive isotopes. One of them is krypton-85, and its half-life is a bit more than 10 years. This isotope naturally occurs in cosmic rays, but in extremely small quantities. In large quantities, krypton-85 is produced as a result of uranium-235 nuclear fission chain reaction. I found an interesting fact in one article about partial ionization of air as a result of krypton-85 reaction with the Earth's atmosphere. This happens because of the gamma and beta rays. As a result of the increased conductivity of air, it passes electricity well, or lightning bolts pass through it much better. This means that the more krypton there is in the atmosphere, the more frequently lightning bolts can strike in places they have never been seen. Because of this unusual property of this gas, it deserves the fourth place. In terms of weirdness, I would rank such a metal as osmium third. This extremely rare metal has the highest density among all other known elements, which has such a bluish color, which helps it stand out from all other metals. This is the case because this metal reflects light in the ultraviolet and violet spectra better than all other metals. A ring made of this bluish metal would look quite nice, wouldn't it? I'll have to disappoint you, because osmium is a very fragile metal. It's extremely hard to make anything from it, especially generally. Even if someone manages to do that, as a result, there will form a very toxic osmium powder, which when exposed to the air, oxidizes into osmium tetraoxide. In case you didn't know, osmium tetraoxide is 50 times more toxic than potassium cyanide. That is why it is even more dangerous to work with this metal than with beryllium. That is why, in spite of its unique high density and beautiful blue color, osmium doesn't have many applications. The second place goes to one of the most unusual metals, to ultralight beryllium. This beryllium cylinder looks nothing but ordinary, until I lift it with my hand. It seems almost weightless. Its density is just 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter. Besides, in spite of being extremely light, heat conductivity of this metal is almost the same as that of copper. An ice cube melts very quickly, because the heat from my hand is transferred effectively. As if that wasn't enough, beryllium is also incredibly hard. It's 1.5 times harder than steel. It would also be mentioned that chemical stability of beryllium is also many times that of aluminium. Even when it is heated up with a burner, it almost doesn't oxidize in the air and melts only upon reacting the temperature of 187 degrees Celsius. It seems to be an ideal metal for manufacturing of ultralight and robust airplanes and lots of other things. Unfortunately, that's not the case, because this metal has one significant disadvantage. Its powder is extremely toxic and it is very fragile. That is why processing of this metal can cost even more than the metal itself. Besides, it's not cheap at all, being five times more expensive than silver. That's why nowadays Pure beryllium is mainly used only in very costly projects, like production of valves for Formula 1, engines, 
or for making windows of X-ray tubes. Finally, the most unusual element on the Earth, according to me, is regular carbon. What's so unusual about it, you may wonder? It can exist in so many forms and is the principal element that all organic molecules making up all living organisms in our planet are made of. Graphite is one of the most widespread forms of carbon. I am holding in my hand a piece of naturally occurring graphite, which was mined in Brazil. Pencils familiar to all of us are made of this same naturally occurring graphite. Its crystalline grid looks like this. If we detach one of the graphite crystalline grid layers, we will get another form of carbon, which is graphene. If a lot of layers of graphene along with graphite are applied one on another, there will be produced an interesting material called pyrolytic graphite. This material is the best diamagnet, which means it repels any magnetic field. I can demonstrate to you this property. If I place a pyrolytic graphite circle on a pile of magnets, now you can see a real magnetic levitation. Such a levitation circle can even hold some weight, for instance a piece of formed plastic. Another well-known form of carbon is diamonds. Inside them, atoms of carbon create strong constructions, which make up the hardest element on Earth – diamond. You can easily cut even a thick glass with a diamond glass cutter and artificial diamonds are used to make the best abrasives. Besides graphite and graphene, scientists can create carbon nanotubes using special equipment. In the future, they can be used in a number of branches from medicine to creating new displays. Speaking of the biological role of carbon, just take a look around. Your body, as well as all other living organisms, are made up of these strange elements compounds. I think that this video was very useful for you. And if you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to open for you an amazing world of chemical elements.